It's um, excited to get back into a game week. Um, we had a much needed uh, off week last week, which was uh, good for our uh, our physical bodies and our mental side. Obviously, uh, disappointing to be setting where we are record-wise and, um, and determined that we must play more consistent football in all three phases and that we've got to coach that better. And uh, we, we spent a lot of time last week um, looking at what what we think needs to be done in order for us to, to do that because we've got uh, obviously a very difficult schedule ahead. Um, two games on the road at, at um, two really teams that are playing really, really good football. And uh, it starts at Missouri this week and uh, they've won seven straight home games. And I think Eli does, uh, I know everybody has their rankings of, of coaches and it's, it's based on, it, to me, it's, I mean, the, the better talent you have, the better coach you are for sure. And uh, to me, some of the better coaching jobs uh, are, are done with, with those lesser rosters uh, in recruiting. And I think you look at people like Eli and Stoops um, and Head Clark Lee now too, that I think are doing incredible uh, jobs at their respective programs. Uh, with the kids that they've had, and they've had some time to develop their culture and, and get their players in. But Eli's, uh, I think he does one of the better jobs in the country in all aspects in managing the new um, the new world that we're facing. And um, he's obviously one of my closest friends in, in the business. And um, it used to be Gus when he was in the conference, and now it's kind of, uh, you know, Eli and, and Kirby are who I probably talk to the most, Eli for sure have great respect for him and um, who he is and how he does things and it's going to be a tall task for us there um, to, to go and compete with a really really good Missouri team they're the best uh, they're the best skill players we've we faced yet and uh, their quarterbacks playing at a really high level also Hey, you, as far as the players go, what was your area of emphasis during the off week? What did you kind of push in practice? Um, we had two practices. Obviously, we were on fall break, and um, we uh, we lifted and, and conditioned on Monday, and then uh, had a Tuesday and Wednesday practice. I thought the Tuesday when they attacked extremely well, um, and Wednesday was was energetic as you can imagine with them knowing mm -hmm. they had fall break on, on Thursday and Friday. So it, was, it really f fell at a good time for us. I thought their energy was great. The emphasis was on us. Uh, just, uh, man, here are the things. we got to get better on these short distances and critical downs on both sides and uh, red zone. And, um, you know, really what is our bread and butter? And, and um, Let's try to make it look maybe different ways, but let's, we probably don't need more. Let's, let's do less and, and, and keep doing it better. So um, had two really good days, truthfully, for an open week. Um, I think having fall break really helped it, you know, because uh, I think everybody needed a little break, coaches, players, and obviously we did some recruiting also, but um, it, was a, it was a good open week. First round one. You mentioned after the game that um, you wanted to have a physical off week and you wanted to uh, find out what players were uh, willing to give 60 minutes in the, in the game. Do you feel like you accomplished that? Yeah, we were really physical on Wednesday. Tuesday, not so much. I backed off that a, a little bit. Um, Wednesday, we were really physical, but knew we could be with the, the two uh, days off of school. Um, you know, I'm really pleased with most of the team and their response to the disappointment. and. Um, you know, of course, we work hard at teaching, um, you know, the qualities that we think this, this sport can develop in life. And I worked hard on that um, and, and last week and this week, uh, yesterday, we changed it up a little bit. We came in yesterday, so they're off today as far as uh, practice. But, um, man, what we be known for and, and, and how you finish anything, I think, is of great value in life. And we'll set them up to have success long after they get through playing here if handled properly. And um, 
I'm, I'm pleased with the response at this point. You, how valuable was the off week in terms of, of self scout going back to look at everything? And then I guess what, what, what did that show you of the offense and then I guess quarterback execution with Peyton and those guys? Um, self scout honestly is about as good as it's ever been on the balance, on the um, unpredictability of formations. And uh, it's, 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 it's pretty good. Obviously, our quarterbacks have, uh, I think Peyton's played well at, at times. and um, and. You know we've struggled at times, so it's it, it's there for everybody to see. But I think as of late, he's played really consistent, and we're going to need that the next few weeks for sure to to be able to compete with these uh, these teams we're going into play. Third row, Mike. Uh, Coach, can you characterize your conversations with Peyton Thorn after some of maybe the confusion in the media about the statements after the game? Yeah, I don't. I don't read the media. Don't listen. Don't have uh, social media anymore. Um, I, I'm very transparent to tell you exactly the truth of what happened. And Peyton thought he needed to change the alignment of the back to handle an edge guy. And I think some of that may have been based on uh, him asking an offensive lineman. And again, we've got to do a better job coaching. That shouldn't have happened. That wasn't part of the the process. And if you go watch the film, if we leave our alignment like it's supposed to be and hand the ball off. Jarquez is running on a DB for an easy first down. Um, so I understand his uh, his thinking there. They just unfolded a linebacker and uh, on the backside, and um, so obviously we did not uh, we didn't coach it well enough for him to know he didn't have to do that. Sir. You, uh, you, you said you're, you're, you're pleased with the balance. Uh, yeah, y'all you, you have, I think I saw the stats, have the fewest running plays in, in the conference. Uh, is that a concern that you're not getting involved mm -hmm. enough to one of the best backs in the conference? Yeah, I think we need to get it to him more. Uh, I don't know what is the average per rush. So I think we've got to, you know, that's that's the one that I care about. and. Um, you know, but there's no question 27 needs to touch it more. That's the frustrating thing of some of our short yardage deals that have been called and, and not executed at a high enough level where he actually touches it. And that's, uh, we've got to get that corrected. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, heck, you know, we've been going since, uh, you know, uh, approximately 1st of August. And um, so that's a long time on, on everybody, even uh, guys that have been doing it a while, in particular, you know, freshmen that are, are brand new and they're having to, you know, go through the, the grind of, of school and, and ball and everything that comes with that. So I think it's, uh, you know, coming after six games, that's about as, as good as you would want it to be. And now, uh, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I believe it's three games now and then another one and then the final three. So I don't know that we could draw up, you know, for a year that you have two open weeks, uh, truthfully them falling um, at, at better times. It's, it, it, it split the season pretty good for us, it looks like. And I think the, the freshmen certainly you know, benefited. Everybody was a little sore and beat up. We've had some physical games. And then the mental side of, of handling not being exactly where you'd hoped to be, uh, I think, was, uh, was a good timing for that also. Jason. <clears throat> the offensive line, too tall, been banged up some. Did this week give you a chance to maybe look at that group again, maybe just to see if you got the right moves? And what do you, what do you thought about their play through six games? Um, we're running the ball effectively, um, so we're doing some good things there. Pass pro's been dicey, um, not at every position, but it doesn't matter. We're a team, um, and so we've got to continue to improve that. Um, 
you know, we're looking at, you know, D-Ways playing some of, of both tackles when two tall gets hurt and that has to shuffle us around and joiners jumping in a guard along with Tate some and um, the game moved a little bit fast for a couple guys at Georgia with all their shifting and stuff um, and it showed and uh, so we, yeah, we're, we're looking at, because you can expect once people put on tape that something worked because, um, you know, Georgia did a good job of studying our Oklahoma game, which, you know, I thought we did really good stuff in that game. And they were shifting right before the snap and, um, you know, it gave us some problems with, uh, with just our mental execution of what I should do on this pass pro or what I should do on this run play for a couple guys. And um, we practiced that, but it didn't uh, show very well on film. And uh, we've got to get that corrected for sure because, and then another, you know, I, no one's asked me, but Corey Batoon is the defensive coordinator at, at Missouri. And he, you know, he's one of my guys and was with me shoot how many years? Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, I mean, he, he's been with me eight to nine years uh, on my staff and we've talked a lot of ball. And so uh, he, uh, he he's a heck of a guy and heck of a defensive coordinator and doing a great job there for Eli. And, um, so that presents its own challenges. Yeah, I look at the consistency over, you know, last year and, and most of this year, obviously. Uh, things can happen when you go on the road in this in this conference and a team gets the momentum and has the right game plan and the right call. And you get uh, really Missouri had a chance to really stay in that game early and had like three penalties and, and calls that went horribly against them. And, and it kind of just snowballed. Um, which, you know, you see that happen from time to time, but I don't make too much of that. I make, I know what I see on film, and I know the consistency that they've, that they've been about almost every single game for the last, what, 15 to, or so to be Ohio State in a bowl game and have many of the, those same kids back. And I um, mean, this is, a, this is a, a top 20 team for sure, if not higher, and um, hadn't, hadn't lost at home in a long time. Um, they're, they're a really quality football team. You, you mentioned that you talked a lot last week about improving the execution being one of your focuses. How do you as a coaching staff, what are sort of the steps you can do during the bye week, I guess, sort of tangibly to, to work on that? Well, the, it's, it's, uh, the thing that's been good is the, having time. Uh, like today, I mean, we, we have most of the game plan in because we obviously started last week. And so now it's are we really, really sure um, from everybody in this room uh, that you feel really, really good about your kids executing this against all these different looks that we may or may not see uh, on this given play, particularly on these critical down calls? Um, and so just having the time to really, all right, let's go back and watch it again. Let's go back and watch it again uh, for the third time this morning on, on three different deals. That um, and so it will be really. And I don't know. You know, again, you got to block and tackle, and you got to you got to catch the football, and you got to make the right read at quarterback. But um, there, there, it, if we have a critical down, it will be very, 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 very disheartening and infuriating if another situation happens on a fourth and one or a third and one where our kids don't have a clear understanding of what should happen. That would be uh, quite infuriating. Second row, Phil. You hear every coach everywhere talk about consistency, uh, which in college football, where you got young guys and older guys, and guys with so many things going on around them. How do you, as a program more than, 
this week. As, as a program, how do you establish that kind of consistency that you need to be successful? Well, it starts with us demanding it in practice. And that's become harder and harder um, to do in ways that we used to do. But um, I, I don't think you can get it unless you demand it consistently in practice. And then the second phase that would be that your team demands it. So, you know, you know one of the, the, the best teams are when you can take freshmen and say, hey, let's use DeMarcus Riddick or Jalen Crawford or Cam Coleman or Perry Thompson or Malcolm Simmons, any of them, say, hey, guys, let me show you what this really is supposed to look like. Go watch these five guys. And that's when you get on to some consistency. All right, well, who are those five guys right now for them? And I think that's one of the things we're struggling with a little bit, you know, is some of our, 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 our best guys are younger guys that are trying to do it the right way, but you really, when you ha start having a team where you have those older guys where you say, go watch him and everything he does, and that's what consistency looks like. And that's where we're trying to get as a program, and that's where some like Missouri, I think they have those, those guys in the building right now, but they've had time. And we're gonna have them too, and we've, we've gotten better at that, but we still have enough that you say that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. Second row. You, you mentioned <clears throat> Missouri's skill talent. They've got two receivers this year, Bourbon and Weiss, that are you know, towards the top of the SEC. These guys play a ton of young guys, especially at corner. Just, just talk a little bit about that matchup and getting those guys prepared for what you said would be one of the toughest matchups in Ohio. Yeah, it's, it's not one that you uh, that you just get overjoyed about. I mean, truthfully, it's, uh, you know, they've got veteran guys that are, have proven to be some of the best in this league, where they're going against, you know, the top tier corners and safeties or not. And, you know, we're, we're due to some injuries and then just our youth, and obviously it's gonna be a great test for us. And, um, you know, we gotta find a way to get them some help and, and eliminate the explosive plays, which is very difficult to do against them. But um, again, it's part of the growing process of, of where we are currently, and I'm sure our kids will be excited for the challenge. Step up, Mike. Uh, Coach, there was a note earlier this week that Auburn leads the nation in snaps on defense by true freshmen. Uh, you've got a defensive coordinator that's given up only 400 yards one time this year. Uh, you know, can you talk about the job that DJ Durkin is doing and uh, what we could expect to see on defense here? I, I couldn't be more pleased, truthfully, with uh, the the passion, the energy, the, the level of detail that I see from our defensive staff. Um, I know that they're frustrated with, you know, not performing well in certain critical downs and all of that, just like we all are. But as far as uh, the buy-in from DJ's leadership to Charles Kelly to Bontrell and Josh and Crime and all the assistants on that side, I just uh, couldn't be more pleased with, with what I see happening and what I think can be the future under their leadership. So re really pleased with them. You less than two months to go until signing day. How do you kind of feel about where the 25 class is at? What's your message to these guys to stick with you as the season isn't going exactly as you want? Yeah, that's why that's why they want to come here. That's that's the reason they should want to come is you're coming to a place that's proven it can play for national championships. Um, it's one of only six that's done it in the last 13 years, on twice um, played for it, and so it's proven it can. We got the resources. Um, now let's get the roster that, that rivals, you know, the ones who are playing for it. And if you want an opportunity to do that in an environment that you know fits you, um, come be a trendsetter and let's do something new and different. Uh, yeah, you can go to the places that are currently doing it or you can help 
uh, restore uh, one that's proven it can also do it. And so I feel really good right now. Obviously, there's the battles for the guys we want are never over, and you've got to continue to fight for that. But I feel like we're in a pretty good position, um, hopefully, to finish strong with another uh, top five-ish class. You talked about kind of short yardage and quarterback. So how do you balance that? You know, as Peyton has done a lot of good things at the line of scrimmage. How do you balance? Yes. How do you balance the, that that freedom? with also making sure that in certain spots, hey, we need to do this no matter what we're seeing. Well, he, didn't, he just didn't have a complete understanding of the play, and that's, that's our fault. Um, it, was, uh, it was a new little, a new play uh, as far as blocking scheme, um, but to, didn't, didn't have to handle the backside edge. And again, that's, that's, you know, we didn't obviously coach it well enough. Yeah, you earlier you were saying you're pretty close with Eli, that you, you know him and you like him. Talk to me about how you got to know him. Was it through Gus? Yeah, through Gus. You know, he's uh, he was uh, an assistant with Gus. And then um, throughout the years, I don't know where we started, uh, truthfully, uh, you know, developing a friendship. But uh, it came pretty naturally. And we gravitate to one another, and our wives do, when we are at common places, and uh, whether it's SEC meetings or whether it's Peach Bowl Classic, or um, I don't know. We just kind of, I think, we're made of, of uh, a similar uh, mindset of, of what coaching should be about, and the bigger picture of uh, trying to keep the bigger picture of uh, the impacting of others and as as important as the wins and losses, which is very difficult to do. I think we see all of those things very, very similarly. Uh, he's a person of faith, um, so. We just, uh, I don't know, the friendship's real, genuine. We talk about a lot of things. Uh, we talk very frequently, truthfully, and um, we've talked twice this week already. And, um, you know, I've got to cut him off. But, uh, <laughs> but he, uh, you know, and he's got some other friends there too that have, that have coached with me. So it's, uh, it's a, it, but the, the great thing is it's a genuine, real uh, friendship, not just, a professional, something um, very similar to Gus and I. All right, Coach.